This is the ArcGIS Maps for Office session. We're going to be talking about Maps for Office this morning. We're going to be giving you kind of a high-level overview of how it fits into the platform and how it fits into this WebGIS idea that you might have heard about at the plenary. Uh, we're going to do some demos. We're going to kind of give you a good idea of what this thing is and how you might be able to use it. Uh, I'm Scott. This is DJ. Hello. And let's go ahead and get started. Um, well, before we get started, how many people currently use Maps for Office? Handful. The rest of you are just checking out Maps for Office, trying to see what it's all about, see if it might be good for your organization. See some heads nodding. Cool. Thank you. OK, so Maps for Office. It is an integration into Microsoft Office, primarily into Excel and PowerPoint. Um, it's a download. You download it. You install it. You'll get a new uh, ribbon in Excel and in PowerPoint. And you will be able to do some mapping stuff right within Excel and PowerPoint. Uh, it integrates with the cloud. You can pull in your ArcGIS information. Anything you put out into ArcGIS, you can get it into Excel. And you can also share from Excel into uh, ArcGIS, whether it be online or portal. Uh, you can also pull all that stuff back down that you've shared into PowerPoint and see live dynamic maps uh, right within your presentations. So that's the general overview. And this is included with ArcGIS. So if you have named users, they can just sign right in and start using the functionality from the get-go. And the first thing that I want to do, uh, did I get a question? Does it have to be named users? Uh, the question was, does it have to be named users? It does. Yep. Um, there's a little bit of functionality that you can get if you're not signed in. It's mostly like viewing capabilities. But to get the full enchilada, you've got to be signed in. Yep. So what I want to do right away is I want to give you a quick demo, or I want DJ to give you a quick <laughs> demo of what this thing looks like. So let's take a look at it real quick, see what it can do, and then we'll kind of uh, talk about it in context with the rest of the platform. All right. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Yes? No? Is this better? Can you hear me? Yes? All right. So I'm going to be showing how you can uh, quickly add a map to your Excel spreadsheet. So just imagine I am an analyst or maybe a manager at your organization. I've just finished editing the sales data for the year. And I want to see it on a map. I can just come right up here to the Excel ribbon, click Add Map. And we try to make this map creation process as simple and as easy as possible. So we break it up into three steps. And we try to set as many intelligent defaults as possible. So uh, for example, right now it's looking at my spreadsheets, looking to see what kind of data I have. Uh, it recognized that I was working in this table and selected it as my data source. It also saw that I have address data. So it automatically selected that. I like my other defaults, and I can quickly change anything if I want to. I can quickly click Add Data, and it gets added to the map. And it's styled automatically. And if I want to, I can make any changes automatically. But I like the defaults. I think it looks pretty good. And it shows the, tells the story I want it to. Cool. So I just wanted to give you a quick taste right up front of what this thing's all about. It's really quickly getting your data from your spreadsheet into a map. So let's step back a little bit and think about how this fits into the whole ArcGIS story. Um, Back in the day, GIS existed solely basically on your desktop. It was a desktop. Um, you created files on your desktop, and that was GIS. Uh, as things progressed, we moved into kind of the server age. And you would have your GIS data stored on a server. Multiple people could access it uh, from their desktops. And uh, that's still going on in a lot of places. But within Esri, our vision is moving towards WebGIS. You probably heard Jack talk about this at the plenary. Uh, we're really all in on WebGIS. WebGIS is this idea that your web maps and your uh, map layers live uh, in the ArcGIS platform, whether it be on-premises through portal or whether it be in the cloud with ArcGIS online. Um, we really think that this is the way it's going to be going. And when you put your data up into ArcGIS, you can get it back out in, a, in many different ways. You can get it out through a ton of the different apps that we have. ArcGIS Maps for Office is one of them. But there are many other ones that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, but this is a really um, good way to connect everybody throughout your organization to this content that you're creating from many different sources, many different apps, including 
uh, the traditional things like ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro, uh, but it's extended the reach into the rest of your organization by letting people that just have Excel uh, or other simple apps uh, be able to contribute data to your overall GIS system. And that's really the story for you guys. Uh, ArcGIS Maps for Office is really intended for the non-GIS user, which is probably nobody in this room. The people in this room, I'm guessing, are GIS professionals. You deal with GIS all day, every day. This is a GIS conference. So how does this app that is targeted for non-GIS people help you? It really helps you expand your reach throughout the organization. As you create these uh, data layers that are extremely important and valuable to your organization, uh, you can get them out to other users because by using Maps for Office, you can really pull down uh, any of that data that you have in your ArcGIS cloud. So if you, the GIS person, put it out into ArcGIS, the layperson using Excel can pull it down into their uh, map in their spreadsheet and make use of it. So it's really expanding your reach throughout your organization if you get this rolled out to, your, to the rest of your organization. Um, a great example of this, I just talked to him yesterday. Uh, EPA, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, I see you, Steve, <laughs> um, is a great example of this. They rolled this out to like 15,000 desktops, and uh, anybody throughout the organization can gain access to it. And it's a really good way for them to uh, leverage their entire workforce and get their work in front of their entire workforce. So um, that's one really great example of how you can get the word out. So stepping down a level from the WebGIS uh, level, that's kind of the, the highest, almost visionary level, moving down into how do you access this WebGIS. You can access this WebGIS system, ArcGIS, through all the different apps on the platform. There are Esri created apps, there are non Esri created apps, like third party people can write their own apps on top of the platform using developer tools. But Esri also makes a whole bunch of apps, and ArcGIS Maps for Office is one of those. And I want to talk a little bit about how we kind of categorize some of these apps. And it might help you think about them as well. Because if you just look out there, there are probably like 80 plus apps. And it gets confusing and it gets hard to think about. So we try to group them into bundles. This isn't, you know, uh, things like apps aren't exclusive to one group or the other. But we like to think of them like there are some general apps that are good for field workers such as like Workforce and Survey123 and Collector. These are the people out in the field collecting data, uh, getting things into their system and putting it up into the ArcGIS cloud uh, from the field. And so there's a whole suite of apps that help them do that. We also have apps for the community and these are ones to help you engage with the community around you, whether it be through open data, if you wanna make your uh, data within your organization accessible and downloadable to the public at large. Uh, you can use the open data site to do that. You can also use our crowdsourcing tools to collect data from the public if you want to get feedback on things that you're working on. But the one that we're really going to be talking about today, or the group that we're going to be talking about today is our Apps for Office productivity. This includes the Maps 4 series of products, which I'll talk about in just a second. It also includes things like Dashboard and ArcGIS Earth and Explorer and GeoPlanner. Um, these are a whole bunch of other ones that we think are people at their, in their office, at their desk, are going to potentially be able to use and get benefit out of the ArcGIS platform. So I highly encourage you to look these up and maybe attend some sessions for the other ones as well. So what are Apps for Office productivity? How do we think about this? Apps for Office productivity, we think, raise the productivity level of individual office workers, people that are not GIS people, people that don't have access to mapping or haven't had real easy access to mapping in the past. So these things need to be easy. Not everybody's a GIS professional. Not everybody is as tech savvy as we are. So these things need to be very easy and accessible. They need to be accessible throughout the entire organization from the C-level on down. You know, C-level executives might be able to look at a map and get some more understanding that they didn't have before if they were just looking at charts and graphs. That's not just limited to us. Everybody can get advantage from looking at a map and gaining the new insight that you might gain from seeing information on a map. They need to be able to quickly get these people to aha moments. Like I was saying with that executive, if you're just looking at tables and graphs, um, when you look at a map for the first time, you're going to gain a whole new understanding or a whole, see whole new patterns that you might not have seen before. And so we need to be able to get these people to that aha moment very quickly and easily through these office productivity apps. 
And finally, once you make that new insight or understanding, we need people to be able to communicate it uh, to the rest of their teams or to the rest of their organization or to the public at large. And throughout this, we want to enable better decision making through geography. We want to tie these things back to geography and help people that didn't have access to that power of understanding uh, gain access to that through these apps for office. So again, I'm drilling down a level, and within that apps for the office category, we have a couple maps for. These are business integrations into existing business systems. For example, Maps for Office is an add-in into Microsoft Office. We also have uh, Maps for SharePoint, Cognos, and MicroStrategy. So if you have any of those business systems, we do have integrations directly into them so that you'll be able to get your RGIS content into them the same way that you can Office. So I highly encourage you to check those out if you have any of those business systems and if that might interest you. We like to think of it this way. This could be any organization chart uh, throughout any business anywhere in the world, really. And traditionally, GIS has been in one or two organizations. You know, it might be in the uh, ops department, it might be in the IT department, it might be in its own GIS department. But in my experience in the working world, Oftentimes the GIS department is very insular, it uh, stays to itself, it works on very difficult problems and very uh, valuable problems to the organization, but they might not have access out to the rest of the organization and the rest of the organization might not even be aware that the GIS department exists. As a personal anecdote, I worked for an energy company uh, a few years ago and I was a business analyst, I had needs for mapping, and I, didn't, I, I knew that we had a GIS department, but I had no means to reach in and ask them for things. They were working on uh, difficult problems such as like, where are the power poles? Where are the assets that we have out in the field? Uh, make sure those are up to date. Make sure that those reports are being sent to the right people. They didn't have time for my little side projects that I needed to work on to do my job because they were working on things that were clearly defined and very valuable to the company. So what we're trying to do with Maps for Office is combine it with WebGIS to get, because everybody uses Excel, like everybody uses Excel, it's on every desktop and every uh, office throughout all companies in the world just about. Uh, we're trying to get GIS out to those people, allow them to make maps, allow them to do things that uh, they wouldn't be able to do otherwise and that the GIS department might not have time or the overhead to take on. For example, the GIS professional, like I said, they're thinking about things that are important and that are hard and that they're trained to do. They're thinking about how to set up Krigging. They're thinking about how to do data management. And then some analyst like me comes along and says, hey, I have some data in a spreadsheet. Could you help me make a map? And then, of course, they're very nice. They do it. And then I come back and I say, uh, that's awesome. Thank you, but that doesn't look quite right. Can you make the dots blue instead of black? And they're like, okay, fine. And then I come back and I was like, blue doesn't really match the report that I'm trying to put it in. Can you make it red instead? You know, and it's this iterative cycle that just burns up time on both ends of the spectrum. You know, the analyst is wasting time going back asking for more things. The GIS professional is wasting time because they're having these people just ask them to make these tiny little changes that are not uh, hard to do, but it just takes up time. And so with Maps for Office, this is a way to kind of short circuit that. This is a way to give some basic level mapping capabilities to uh, the end users throughout your organization. So with that said, what can Maps for Office do? Again, the goal is to help all users quickly make better decisions and communicate them using GIS and geography. Maps for Office can help you visualize your data in new ways. You saw DJ at the very beginning in that first demo. You saw that box on the left pop up. I want to kind of reiterate what he was saying. This is, uh, we have some smarts baked into this. And what it's doing before that box ever pops up, it looks at your data. It looks at what's going on in your spreadsheet, what you're working with at the moment. And it tries to determine what data set you want to map. And so that's that number one in the uh, far left. It picks your table for you automatically. If you don't have anything selected or if it can't quite figure out what's going on, it'll prompt you to select the right cell range or table or whatever. But it's got smarts in there. It figures it out. And if you're working with data, it'll pre-select it. It'll also uh, look at what location types you have available. So if you have addresses, it'll, use, it'll default to addresses. If you don't have a fully qualified address, it'll bounce down to like zip code or state or whatever. If you have lat lawn, it picks lat lawn. It works with that as well. But you don't have to have lat lawn. It can work with addresses as well. 
Uh, and then finally, it looks for a column to style by. That's how you want to visualize things. That's how you want the symbology to look. And uh, it will look for things like the words like total or sales or things that we think might be or might be in places that you would want to use as a mapping field. And it picks one of those by default. You can always change it. and You don't have to have any styling if you don't want to. But it really quickly sets that up and shows you what kind of map you might be getting ready to make. That's what you're seeing down below. Um, it will, based on that style by column, whether it's a number or a string or a categorical value, it will pick the right thing. And so as you change that style by column, those options that you have down there, how you can make your map look, show up. And that was one of our um, early uh, design iterations. We didn't have that to begin with. If you've been tracking maps for Office for a while, we didn't have this visualization. And we just had a series of boxes, and you pick the things that you want, and you hit go, and then it would make a map. And that map might not be what you wanted it to look like. And so we're giving you a preview really quickly here so that you can see what the map you're about to make might look like. Um, the middle box shows you after you add, hit add data, you can style your data. It gives you some options whether you want to do classification, you want to stylize it through um, proportional symbology. Um, one of the things that we got recently, I think it was with our last release, was the ability to set uh, custom class breaks. In the past, in Office, you haven't been able to do that. So being able to set class breaks, uh, oddly, isn't excited, like a great new feature that we're adding. Um, it's sad that that's a great new feature, but it is a great new feature, and it's a thing that we were asked for a lot. So it's in there now. If you've been waiting for it, if you've been wanting it, it's in there now. Uh, and finally, there on the right, non-GIS users love heat maps. And so we provide the ability to style your data using heat maps if you want to do it that way. So that's all talking about visualizing your own data. In addition to visualizing your own data, you can also put your data in context with other data sets throughout the world. And you can do that a couple different ways. So you can either add data from your organization, meaning if your non-GIS end desktop user is adding their data from their spreadsheet and they want to combine it with some of the data that you've created as the GIS professional and you have it out there on your ArcGIS account, they can pull that data in and mash it up within a map uh, with their data. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, you can also go out and get stuff outside of your organization because Esri provides a whole wealth of data through the Living Atlas, through demographic maps, through cork plath maps that we provide uh, as part of the ArcGIS system. You can go in, bring those in, and compare your locations to, let's say, uh, income data for your region or health data for your region. Um, it's really easy to access. You just go to Add Data, pull it in from ArcGIS, and that's all there. I don't know if you guys have seen the tapestry tool, the zip code tool, where you can put in the zip code and it will tell you what kind of people live in your zip code. It's a really neat tool, uh, but we provide that same capability within Maps for Office. If you click on a point, if you've done it by points and you add addresses and you click on one of your locations, uh, within the pop-up there will be an infographics button. And within that infographics button you can see tapestry segmentation. So you can actually see what kind of people live within uh, let's say for, by default it's a one mile ring. So you can see what kind of people live within one mile of that area. So it's a really neat way to kind of uh, browse around your locations and see what kind of people live there. In addition to that, we provide reporting. These standard reports, um, for example, this one, I know it's tiny, but that says community profile. It's got 20 or 30 variables uh, that relate to uh, a community profile of a particular area. So if you click on, again, click on one of your points, go to reports, you can generate this report for, let's say, three or four different locations, and then you'll have kind of an apples to apples comparison between those three or four locations. So you can compare the communities that you might be examining, let's say, for a new property or a new site that you're trying to select. So this leads us to our second demo. I kind of want to give an overview of uh, what DJ is going to be showing you. This is a real world use case coming from Jim Hibbard at Market Source. Uh, Jim uses Maps for Office to very quickly visually identify what's going on in his area. He has some store sales data. He uses our data enrichment tools to bring in some variables from ArcGIS, add them to his spreadsheet, and then visualize that and investigate why stores may be underperforming. And so he just kind of scans around the map real fast and uh, can see just it pops out at him which stores might be underperforming. So DJ, why don't you sure. show him how to do that? Oh. All right, so what you're seeing here is 
a map. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what basically we're showing unit sales within a particular product category at each retail location that Market Source is working with. Uh, Market Source does B2B consulting, and they wanted to very quickly and visually see, as uh, Scott said, what stores were underperforming. Now, they've got part of the story here in terms of how, you know, how many individual units each retail location is selling, but they also needed to get an idea of what consumer demand is like. So to answer that question, they went up here and used the Enrich Data tool in ArcGIS Mass for Office. And as Scott said, you can use this tool to bring in demographic data right into your spreadsheet. And you can slice it, and you can pivot table it, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it in your Excel spreadsheet. And then you can visualize this data on the map as well. So here we're going to look at, a, uh, in this case, they're looking at major appliances. It gives us a list of different variables. I'm just going to pick uh, 2016 major appliances. Come down here, click Next. And now I can customize the data I'm going to get. So I can say, well, I could have data for a one-mile ring around each location. Or I could do drive times or even drive distance. And I can customize just how big the ring I want and whether I want it in miles or kilometers. Uh, in the case of Market Source, they did three miles. And then here we can determine where do we want this new data to appear in our spreadsheets. So because I added my data from a table, I can actually have the option to create a brand new column. If I'd added my data from a cell range or a named range, I'd only have the option to replace a currently existing column, so I might have to replace my store number column with demographic data. But we added our data from a table here, so we can create a brand new column automatically. All I have to do is click Add Data to System, and right now ArcGIS Maps for Office is reaching out to the Esri servers, querying them. They're calculating what data we're going to get, preparing it to be put into our spreadsheet, and when it's ready, it'll come over here and deliver it in a brand new column, just like that. And then it also, over here on the side, updates the map. So you can visualize this data immediately if you want to. You don't have to re-geocode or do any kind of updating yourself. It does it automatically. And there you go. Now we want to be able to actually see this data right now. And so rather than you know, re-geocode and create another layer, I'm just going to copy this layer. And because we copied it, it's got all the exact same settings. So we can come over here to choose another style and select a different attribute, in this case our new one, Major Appliances. I really don't like the look of my map, so we're going to make some changes. So let's see here. I like the circles, but I'd much prefer red, and I'm not an outline guy. Let's get rid of those things. Come down here and click OK, and we're almost done. You can take this layer, move it to the bottom, and rename it, say, Retailers and Consumer spending. And there we go. Anywhere I see red means that consumer spending is uh, greater than unit sales at that location. So this is an area where we could probably improve. We can come down here, we'd see more locations where we could improve. But we can also see all these locations here, they seem to be doing just fine. So just like that, I've gotten brand new demographic data that we can actually make real actionable decisions on and I've been able to visualize it on the map. Cool. Thanks, TJ. That's pretty cool stuff. I think so, anyways. So in addition to visualizing your data and enriching your data, you can also do some spatial analysis. Uh, we are not a hardcore spatial analysis tool, but we do provide a little bit of spatial analysis capabilities, uh, such as find nearby and selecting things near the locations that you're interested in. For example, on this screenshot, uh, there's a point in the center there that is, let's call it a store location. And let's say those other points are customers. You can say, show me all of the customers within, let's say, 15 minutes of that store. It creates that drive time ring, that's the blue thing going on around there, and it returns back and tells you how many customers are within that drive time. You can then do a couple different things. You can select those, um, those specific customer records in your spreadsheet and highlight them. You can filter your spreadsheet down so that only those are showing. 
uh, and then you can continue to work on them. So this is a really powerful workflow that integrates and lets you do some spatial selections with your Excel data. We also have the Find Hotspot tool, and this is our closest to a real statistical analysis tool. It uses that uh, optimized hotspot tool from ArcGIS Online, and it will tell you statistically significant hotspots and cold spots within your data. So I want DJ to show that to you as well. He's going to show you the Find Nearby stuff. So DJ, take it away. All right. So what you see here at this donut-looking feature is a donut shop. They're looking to branch out their business into deliveries. They want to deliver fresh donuts to local businesses every morning. They have a list of 1,000 leads, but because this is a brand new business and they've never done deliveries before, they're really only interested in those leads within about a five minute drive time of the shop. Now, when you have a list this long, trying to accurately determine which ones are actually within five minutes can be daunting if you don't have any GIS experience. Luckily, they, you can use the Find Nearby tool to filter the spreadsheet down to just the ones that meet your criteria. So what I'm going to do here is because we're going to be working in both the spreadsheet and in the map, I'm going to use the Arrange Maps tools. This is just a good way to very quickly arrange your windows so you can move back and forth between the, the map and the spreadsheet. Then I can come over here and I just click on the shop. And right there in the pop-up is the Find Nearby tool. And I can customize what I want it to do. So I can choose a ring or a drive time. And I can set this uh, however I need to. In this case, we like five minutes, but I could do one minute. I could do 20 minutes, 200 minutes. But we're going to stick with five minutes for now. And we're going to save our search area as a layer. And then you'll notice here, it's already selected my other layer to do the searching in. Again, going back to those intelligent defaults. Everything else looks pretty good. I come down here, click Find, and it very quickly does a calculation and finds that I have 47 locations within five minutes. Now, this still isn't quite actionable enough for what we need. We need to actually filter out the data in the spreadsheet. I can come down here, click Filter Spreadsheet, and there we go. We have a list we can now copy and paste into another spreadsheet if we, if we want to. We can put it into a Word document, give it to sales reps, and we can make some real action, take some real um, action. There we go. Cool. Thanks, DJ. And if you'll notice, uh, when he did that filter, it's also bidirectional. If you filter your spreadsheet, because filtering is a very powerful tool within Excel, uh, if you filter things on your spreadsheet, it does take them off of the map as well. So they are bidirectional and they work together. So kind of a cool feature. Okay, so you've seen these visualizations, you've done some analysis, how do you collaborate with your peers? How do you get this information out to the rest of your organization or to your boss or to whoever you need to get it out to? Um, there are a couple different ways. This is a screenshot of the ribbon. You can, there on the far left, you can share the entire map. So if you've got multiple layers that you're working with and you want the people that you're sharing this with to see the entire collection of layers together, you would share the map as a whole. And that will bundle all the layers together, send it up to ArcGIS, whether it be portal, online, again. If you just want one of those layers, if you're saying this is the find hotspot layer that I created and that's really the one that I want to share with my ArcGIS organization, uh, you can click on share layer and just share that one particular layer. You can also use the create slide button to, it will just take a snapshot of whatever you're looking at on your map right now and go put it into a new slide in PowerPoint. Um, that's just a static screenshot and I'll show you in a little bit how you can actually make a dynamic map in PowerPoint, but that's not what this button does. This button just puts a, a, a static screenshot in there. Then we also have a copy map button which just takes a screenshot of the map that you're looking at right now, copies it to your clipboard, and you can paste it into whatever you want to, including email. Say you're writing an email to your boss and you want to say, hey, I found a bunch of hotspots in the middle of LA. Uh, that's the email you can make and you can paste it right in after you've hit the copy map button. I want to talk a little bit about the sharing options that you have whenever you use share map or share layer. You need to give it a title. Whether it be a map or a layer, you need to give it a title and that's that top line. The next line is some tags. You need to give it some tags. And for this one, uh, I was looking at crime in LA, so I give it the tags crime LA 2015. You can write a summary description if you like. 
And then you need to choose who you want to share it with. If I don't check any of those boxes, it's just going to upload to ArcGIS and be available to me and just me alone. If I start checking those different boxes, let's start at the bottom. And it says these groups. And those are groups that I'm a member of. For example, for this, I was a member of the Pothole Repair Field Crew Group, the County Hotline Personnel Group, and the Sidewalk Repair Field Crew Group. And so if I wanted to just share it with other members of those groups, I could check the boxes that I wanted to. And then right above that, it says Location Analytics. That's my organization. I belong to the Location Analytics organization. And if I want to make these layers available to everybody in that organization, I can check that box. And then at the very top, that is the powerful box. That is everyone. That is make this available to the public box. So you need to be careful. It's very powerful. It's very cool. Uh, having the ability to share something with everyone and make it publicly available means that you can take your data from Excel, share it with everyone, click the share button, and then go put it in uh, some other piece of communication that you might be communicating to the world. You can embed it into a website. You could make a story map out of it that you want to share with your constituents. You could do anything like that because once it's part of that platform, any other app can pull it down and make use of it. So that's a really cool story that we're going to talk a little bit more about here in a minute, but it's also sometimes dangerous. So you need to pay attention to roles and permissions and make sure that your users have the right roles and permissions uh, to be able to share with the right level of audience that you want them sharing with. Question. I've got a question. When you created um, a layer, where did it save it? Uh, the question was whenever I created a layer, where did it save it? It saves it to my organization. So it went to ArcGIS Online? If I was connected to ArcGIS Online, it went to ArcGIS Online, yes. If I was connected to Portal, it went to Portal. Yep. Cool, thanks. So. Once you've done this, you've shared, you can also help tell your story better. We do have the integration into PowerPoint as well. And so you, whenever you install the add-in into PowerPoint, you'll get these new options. You'll get a new ribbon group called ArcGIS Maps, and you'll get the option to sign in and then add map slides. And we've completely redesigned our PowerPoint experience. Uh, we have, in the past, if you saw uh, Maps for Office, uh, a couple versions ago, the adding data into PowerPoint was a little bit more confusing. Everything happened within one window. Uh, people weren't quite following how to use it. We've completely chucked that version and we've redesigned it from the ground up so that it's easy to walk through. Figure out what data you want to pull in from ArcGIS, uh, pick what layers you want to show on the map, create a legend, figure out what kind of layout you want on your slide, and then insert that sucker into your slide. And uh, I want to give you a quick demo of this. And since I'm the one kind of running the, the PowerPoint show right now, let's just look at one of these that I've already made within PowerPoint and take a look at it. So a little background into what this map represents. Um, whenever people downloaded Maps for Office at this last version, we have a whole new website and we ask for a couple pieces of information from you. We ask for your name and your industry, I think, or your company and your email address. And so once we get that information, we store it into Salesforce. And so once it's stored into Salesforce, we can match it with a lot of other information if we recognize your email address. And so with that is some location information that I downloaded into my spreadsheet, and I wanted to see where everybody was downloading Maps for Office, because I think that's pretty interesting stuff for me. So that's what the white dots are. Mm -hmm. And part of my job as product manager is finding out what features need to go into the product. How is the product being received? Are people enjoying it? Are people getting what they need out of it? And so to do that, I wanted to send out a survey to, to different folks and find out how we were doing. So I, I dog fooded our own product. And from that spreadsheet that I have of email addresses of people that downloaded Maps for Office, I wanted to reach out to some of them. And so I started locally. And I sent batch one down here to the Redlands and vicinity area. I wanted to just kind of start small, start with people that might be familiar with Esri. So I made a selection in my spreadsheet, uh, or in my map in my spreadsheet, filtered down to just those people, and I had their email addresses, and I just mail merged them right into Outlook, mail merged, and sent them an email with a survey on it. And so some people in this room might have gotten that survey. I don't know. Um, my second batch was reaching out to the rest of the West Coast. So you'll see that group up through the rest of the West Coast. Uh, that's kind of a lighter green. That was my second batch of emails that I sent the survey to. Uh, third batch was East Coast, Mid-Atlantic. 
I wanted to capture like DC and New York and talk to some of the people in those areas and figure out how it was working for them. And um, I sent my fourth batch to the UK just to see kind of an international perspective, see how things were working for them. So uh, I just wanted to kind of give you the background on what this map is. And now I'm showing you, I've clicked this unlock button up here at the top because I've created a, a dynamic map in here. And so I can pan and zoom and we can take a look at all the different places that uh, I've sent surveys to, uh, see all the different people that I haven't sent surveys to and who I might want to reach out to in the future. And if I click on one of these, I can see uh, some information about that person. So any of the pop-up information that you had in Excel, you're also going to have over here in PowerPoint. So that's just a little quick demo of how you can have a live map that's panable and zoomable in PowerPoint. Another way that you can take advantage of this data once you've uploaded it to ArcGIS is using the different apps on the platform. One of the ones that we feel like merges really well with Maps for Office is Story Maps. Uh, how many people in the audience have heard of Story Maps? Well, a good percentage. Story Maps are really powerful to help you tell your story because a lot of people use PowerPoint, but also a lot of people might not be using PowerPoint. A lot of people might use something else. And Story Maps is a great way to have a, this web based experience that you can either show in a presentation or just leave it up all the time and send people links to it so that they can check out what you're working on, kind of get that information uh, right away. So I clicked on that image, and this is a story maps link uh, that is pretty useful. It talks about all the different kinds of story maps that you can make. I want to look at one really quickly called the story map tour. It allows you to embed like a picture and uh, a number of different locations that you might want to tour people around. Uh, each one of those locations can have their own information and pictures and a map associated with it. And so I just wanted to show that example real quick. This is a live story map. Um, and what I wanted to kind of get across was the idea that um, the Story Maps app helps you bundle all these pictures and, and tiles and locations across the bottom into this nice looking web app. But this map here, this map can be created just from any of your layers on ArcGIS. And any of those layers could have come from Maps for Office. So you could have somebody sitting in at their desk in your office with a spreadsheet with their locations. And as you get a new, new location that you might want to highlight on your story map, they can update the spreadsheet, click on update, and then this story map would update on the web in real time. It's a pretty cool, pretty powerful story. Uh, one that I also want to highlight is, uh, this came from my conversation yesterday, EPA, EPA is doing exactly this. This is a real live EPA website. They have somebody in their public affairs department uh, with a spreadsheet with these locations around New Hampshire. And as information changes or as things get updated, they make an update to the spreadsheet. They click on update and this real live website with this ArcGIS map embedded in it updates in real time. It's a pretty powerful story. It's a pretty handy tool to be able to give people that have never had this kind of power, never had this kind of access to, to make maps this easily, uh, have that power and have that access. It's a really neat tool. So let's jump back over into uh, the slide deck. And there's one more that I want to talk about, one more way of interacting with other apps, and that is using Ops Dashboard. How many people have heard of Ops Dashboard? Uh, not as many. So Operations Dashboard is a way to kind of bring in all kinds of different maps and layers on your ArcGIS uh, organization and monitor them in real time. It might be useful in a disaster management scenario, which is what DJ is going to talk about in just a second. And it's a way to, if you have somebody out there using collector updating information, let's say um, how many of this are in this location, you can see when it goes down and gets below a certain threshold. And I'm going to let DJ take over and actually tell the story. So. All right, cool. Oh, thank you. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today is how you can use the platform to respond in, emer in an emergency situation, specifically in terms of maintaining resource levels at an emergency site. Um, now, I imagine most of you have heard of the crisis that's been going on in Flint, Michigan. Uh, essentially, what's happened, oh, and I've lost my. <laughs> essentially, what's happened is the people of Flint, Michigan have had to rely 
almost entirely on bottled water and on filter, filtered water for the last, well, most of the last year because of water contamination. And particularly during the early days of the crisis, they were relying primarily on bottled water. And these, this bottled water was distributed at uh, five fire stations by volunteers. Now, when you're working with volunteers like this who don't necessarily have much experience working with technology or with um, warehouse management software, you need a solution that's going to um, be very, have a very easy, to, be very easy to learn. And in the case of the ArcGIS platform, and particularly with ArcGIS Maps for Office, you've got a very good solution there because the ArcGIS platform allows you to share location data very quickly and very easily and ArcGIS Maps for Office works right inside of Excel and Excel as most of you know is used by the vast majority of Americans and the handful of people who don't use Excel it's the basics are very easy to pick up you know clicking in a cell update the content click save it's very quick, very easy, and we've all been using you know, columns and rows since we were in kindergarten and in first grade making you know, multiplication tables. So the way this would work is you'd have each distribution location create a feature layer, or you could create one for them, and then you'd have these, these layers feed into a single web map right here. And this web map is actually updating every second. And then you can have this information feed in to operations dashboard. And so what you're looking at here on these gauges, these tell you the number of filters remaining at each of these black symbols right here, which are filter distribution locations. And then over here, these gauges, these are the water levels at each fire station and they reflect the uh, levels in real time. So all a volunteer has to do is go into their spreadsheet, type in however many cases of water they have left, update the layer, and it'll show up here on the map. Now we're gonna be particularly interested in Fire Station 5 right now. And say they've got a lot of, whoop, they've had a lot of people asking for water that morning. They can just come into the spreadsheet. Uh, somebody give me a number that's less than 2,000. 1980. 1980? Okay. They can come in here. I'm going to save this just in case. Click update the layer and all of this information here has been pre-populated so they don't have to enter anything new. They click share and it updates the layer. And this information, as soon as the layer finishes updating, updates the operations dashboard. And you can see immediately that uh, Fire Station 5 needs to have replenishment prioritized. And there you go. You can very quickly and easily integrate communications across uh, the, in, in a fairly large area and do it in a way that would be accessible to people who don't even necessarily have much uh, technology experience. Cool. Thank Thanks, DJ. That is WebGIS, right? That's what our vision is for WebGIS. You're in your Excel spreadsheet, you make an update, it shows up somewhere else that's connected via WebGIS. It's pretty cool stuff. So, what's new in Maps for Office? Um, the things we've been focused on lately are bringing in more ArcGIS capabilities. Uh, smart mapping has been a big capability, a big enhancement to the ArcGIS system. It is taking a lot of the knowledge from our cartographers and baking it in so that people that might not know how to make pretty maps can really easily make pretty maps. And so we've brought that into Maps for Office as well, so it's a lot easier to make nice looking maps in Maps for Office. We've also added time animations. If you have uh, a date field in your spreadsheet, you can animate that over time. It will pick it up and you can uh, hit the play button and watch patterns play out over time using your Excel data. It also supports time-enabled layers coming from ArcGIS. So you can mash up your time-enabled data from Excel and your time-enabled data from ArcGIS and see how those things interact over time. We also provide layer, layer auto refreshing, and that is about uh, near real time data updates. In the past, when you pulled in a layer from ArcGIS, 
it just pulls it in and that's basically a static layer for the most part. Uh, but we know that the real world isn't static. If you pull in a weather layer, you don't just want a snapshot of whenever you pulled in that weather layer. You want that weather layer updating over time. And so uh, layer auto refreshing is a way to do that. You can set the refresh interval to say like five minutes, 10 minutes, a minute, whatever you want it to be. And it'll go out and check for updates to that layer on ArcGIS. We've also beefed up uh, native capabilities. And we've already shown you some of this. That's that bi-directional filtering. Uh, you can click on a pop-up, click on find nearby, and then click on um, filter spreadsheet. And it will filter the spreadsheet down to just those areas that you've selected. Uh, we've also, as I showed you, we have a whole new, brand new PowerPoint experience. And um, we're pretty proud of that. And we're hoping people get in there and let us know what they think of the new PowerPoint experience as well. So what's coming? Uh, the next release is coming a little bit later this summer in our 4.1 release. It's going to be a minor uh, point release, but we do have some pretty nice updates coming, we think. We're going to be giving some performance improvements. Um, for those of you who like the tech details, what this means is right now that map window that you see, it's made with Internet Explorer. And we're ripping out IE and we're putting in Chrome. And so when we put in Chrome, we see a lot of speed and performance improvements. So we're in the process right now of testing that, making sure all the bugs are worked out. Uh, but we should be seeing a lot of performance improvements with that update. Uh, we've also uh, been working on the UI and polishing the UI. So you'll see an improved user interface. And we've uh, squashed some critical bugs. A um, couple notable ones that uh, we'll be publishing uh, when we release it for one. We're looking, moving beyond that release, we're looking at our 5.0 release early next year. And we've got a number of things here on the slide that I'd like you to kind of read through and take a look at. Um, most of them have been listening to customers, listening to you guys, hearing what you think is important and what you would like to see in Maps for Office. Uh, some of the notable ones were adding labels and being able to add labels and annotations. Uh, type in this place is important and draw an arrow to it and then copy that and put it into a report. That's one of the biggest ones we've heard, and so I think that's definitely going to be in there. Um, the rest of them, uh, we want to put them in there, but sometimes our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. So um, what I want your help with is I would like you to help us understand what's important to you. Um, I've created a little survey out there at bit.ly slash M4O features, and I've got a list of our features that we're considering for our 5.0 release. Uh, you can go in and check the ones that you would like to see, the ones that are important to you, and that will be your direct feedback to me to let me know how you would like me to prioritize that 5.0 release. So that would be very helpful if you can help me with that. Also, we have an ideas site. I don't know if you guys have been out there. How many people have heard of the ideas site? I have. Eh, about half. That's not bad. Um, for the rest of you, the ideas site is awesome, and I meet with the ideas site rep uh, every month to go over what's coming in on the ideas site. Ideas.artjs.com. You can say, hey, I would really like to see this new feature in Maps for Office. Or, hey, I would really like to see this new feature in ArtJS Online. And it's your direct line to us to let us know uh, what you want to see in the platform. So this is a really powerful tool that I really hope that you guys take advantage of. Um, we do listen. We do pay attention. And like I said, I review these monthly. So uh, please, please, please tell us what you want to see. So a few more things that I want you to know about. You can download it at esri.com slash office. You can talk about it and tell us what you're thinking about it and tell us what's working and what's not working on the GeoNet forum. Uh, you can tweet at us. Uh, you can always email me, sball at esri.com. Please let me know if there's something you're wanting to see or if you have trouble or um, anything that you want to talk to me about. Please reach out, sball at esri.com. Uh, at this time, I think we should go to q and A. I I think we have a few minutes for that. So uh, that's, that's the end of the formal presentation. And so we'll move on to questions now. I see a lot of hands. I see this one first. Yes, one quick question here. Uh, all these other uh, capabilities, for example, enhancing the, the data with uh, data files from RJS Online, will that consume credits? OK, the question was around enrichment and data enrichment and how we brought that data in from ArcGIS Online and added it to our spreadsheet. He asked, does that consume credits? Yes, it does. And we do. One thing we've been very mindful with in Maps for Office is for operations like that that can consume a number of credits, we do, before you hit go and do it, we tell you. We have a little, like almost like a receipt that says, you're about to use x many credits. Is that OK? And then you have to OK it. 
Yeah. Blue shirt. The question is, how do you add the ribbon once you download it to Excel? It should automatically be there. If it's not, um, you may need to contact support. Yeah. Is there a way to visualize data that doesn't have coordinates or addresses, like via a lookup table? Yes. Uh, the question was, is there a way to add data that doesn't have like a coordinate or an address or something like that via a lookup table? Yes. Uh, one thing that we didn't touch on, but that is very important, is that we call that um, custom location types. And so you can use a, uh, a feature service or a layer on ArcGIS as the locator for any of your spreadsheet data. So as long as you have the same, basically a, a geospatial lookup field, you know, uh, with the same IDs to match the geometry to your rows, uh, you can absolutely link those up and use those geometries for your spreadsheet data. Cool. Over here. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, will this be available in Microsoft Access? We don't have any plans right now to provide support in Access. No. Right here in the front row. Um, how does that update? So when you guys have to do update, so users have to download the update, or does it? Yeah. So the question is, how does it update? Once you've installed it, how do you get new updates? So there is in the installation uh, process a thing that says "Keep me updated," and so your your once installed and you've checked that box. Uh, when a new update is pushed out, you'll get a notification that says a new update is available. Um, if you didn't check that box, then you'll just have to pay attention to the Esri blogs and see when we release a new version and download mm -hmm. it and install it. Yep. Any more questions? One right here. The question was when generating a map from an Excel file and you have images, images in the spreadsheet? Yes. If you have images in the spreadsheet, will that carry over? I haven't tested that. Do you know? It doesn't? No. OK, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Although that would be a great, if that's important, that's a great enhancement request. It, it is something that's come up in our discussions. So. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Uh, OK. In the, uh, So the question is, any standard geographies, such as county FIPS code, that it recognizes in the polygon format? Uh, yeah, you do, right? Uh, I, I didn't catch the question. Oh, OK. So um, yeah, one of the like, we have a whole list of location types that we support. By default, in the little drop down, it'll say like uh, the standard ones, mm -hmm. uh, city, state, zip code. But then it'll say more. Mm -hmm. And in the more options, there will be things like FIPS, county FIPS, and uh, block group, and DMCA, and all kinds of different stuff. Any other questions? One more. Right there. Is there any limitation uh, for the computers, for the uh, workstations in an organization to, add, to use this adding? Uh, what kind of limitation? limitation? Uh, I mean, I, can I add, use this adding in all uh, computers uh, connected with a portal, the, this RKS maps for office? Okay, so the question was, are there any limitations? Can I use this with any computer in my organization? Any number. Any number. Uh, no, there's no number. Like, you do have to have a named user to sign in. So that might be a limiting factor. Uh, it works on Office 2010 and 2013. So th they would need one of those versions of Office. Uh, most recent versions of Windows. Do we support 10 mm -hmm. right now? Not not technically, but it works on 10. Okay, so a 4.1 will support. officially support 10. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And so those are kind of the limiting factors. There's not like you only get 10 installs of Maps for Office or anything like that. It's just limited by your resources. Yeah. I see a question in the back. What about Office 2016? What about Office 2016? We're working on it. Um, yeah. 90 some odd percent of everything works in Office 2016. What we run into is Microsoft is still changing the way a lot of things work under the hood for Office 2016. So it's what we keep finding is every few weeks, Microsoft makes a change to 2016. And in our testing, we find that it causes one of our features to not work anymore. Um, so we're not release certified right now on yes. 2016, but we're shooting for that for our 4.1 release later this summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? All right, we're going to hang out. We'll be around for a few minutes if you want to come up and talk to us and ask any questions for us personally. Thanks a lot.